Good evening, salutations, my GH fans. I want to talk about Curtis for a minute. Um, probably going to be doing a lot of jumping back and forth, but what Curtis did towards the end of the episode was very interesting. Um, you know, he's been trying to find ways to get more information on Marshall. You know, he tried to get Jordan to compromise herself. I don't think he's really going anywhere as far as with um, Drew, hell, even tried to reach out to Sonny. And now, he made a phone call, and I'm pretty sure it's Miss Wu. Also, by the previews, I can tell that it's Miss Wu that, you know, he reached out to. He's really, des he's really desperate for information, and he's willing to compromise himself, his club, in order to get it. I feel like it's going to be one of those situations that's going to wind up backfiring down the line. Since Curtis decided to reach out to Miss Wu um, for a favor in exchange for, you know, letting them run their games and stuff like that, she's probably going to expect more from him since she already kind of got, you know, a leg in his business already. Um, I don't know. I guess I found that pretty interesting because it's like, you know, we can all look at what Curtis is doing, and a lot of us can call him a hypocrite, but we can also call it being human. Also stupid, but you know we'll, we're gonna just run with that. Um, you know this is after he talks to um, Stella. You know Stella wound up having a panic attack. wasn't like a heart attack or anything like that, but you know it's caused by the stress of whatever secret that she's keeping. Or that, you know, her and Marsha was keeping. And when Curtis asked me, you know, like, what's going on? Like, you know, wasn't Marsha? Do you stress her out? What's, what's, what's up? He's not getting anywhere with her because she's not saying anything. You know, leads him to do something desperate. Probably stupid down the line, but, you know. Either way, Mrs. Wu got what she wanted. Um... All right, let's talk about Valentine for a minute. Um, you know what? How does everyone feel about his mustache? I, I'm not really feeling feeling the mustache, to be honest. I feel like only a certain amount of people can actually pull that off. Um, Victor, Victor Cast, I mean Victor Newman from YNR, Mac and PI, the old school one, me. Um. I'm not really following the mustache. Anyway, so he starts to try to seduce Jennifer Smith, and they wind up going to the hotel. Now, Jennifer puts something, I don't know what she put, but she puts something in some sort of, like, safety lockbox. And she's all like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to sit there and go in the shower, and, you know, you can come and join me. And he's like, oh, you know, I'll be there in a minute or whatever. <sighs> So Valentine and Anna clearly went to the same pot, um, spy school because the minute that she jumps in the shower, he starts to try to, you know, open whatever is inside um, the safe. And I'm sitting there looking, I'm like, bro, you should probably make sure that like the coast is clear. Like granted, he did kind of look like a couple of times, but I just had that feeling that the whole time she was like trying to describe, you know, to, um, describe her shower, that she was there distracting him, and I felt like the minute that he turned around, you know, she was gonna have a gun. I'm like, bro, I'm pretty sure you don't want to get shot again. Um, and towards the end of the episode, he did want him getting caught, and I'm just like, yep. Clearly, you two went to the damn same spy school. Um. And to be honest, I'm surprised, I guess, you know, I was, as I was sitting there watching, I was like, I'm sitting there thinking the whole time, does Jennifer already know who he is, you know, know that he's Valentine and just sitting there just kind of just playing along? Because I feel like, in some ways, I feel like she should, especially since, you know, he's a cast iron and everything like that. He's been claiming he's been a cast iron for a hot minute. But then again, if you sit there and think about, like, you know, who's really, like, known-known, like, Sonny's known, 
Laura's known, Anna's known, you know, like as far as like reputation wise. Maybe Valentine's just not on that level. So maybe she doesn't really know who he is. But um, apparently she, <laughs> she's going to find out tomorrow. So let's talk about Michael and Will for a minute. So they both get served papers. This is regarding Nina, you know, filing for a petition to see Wiley. And Michael's like, all right, you know what, listen, I got to sit there and try to talk to that Smokes guy to sit there and get the um, charges dropped. So Smokes comes in there. Um, and at some point when, when Harmony gets there, they let the two talk. Long story short, you know, Michael's like, all right, listen, if you want to sit there and try to take me to court, that's cool. And you're going to go bankrupt doing it because I'm going to sit there and drag that out like there's no tomorrow. And what he does is he's like, you know, listen, I can give you a scoop on Nina or her transgressions, um, even kidnapping Avery, all of that. You know, everything is leading up, you know, as far as the court battle and stuff like that. And... um you know, he says he has a lot of good information, first-hand account, and Smoltz buys it. So, I mean, in a way, this is also a win for Michael because, you know, if Smoltz publish, you know, like, starts to, you know, put the stories out or whatever as far as Nina is concerned, then it can also weaken her case. And it can get the assault charge dropped on, um, you know, the assault charges um, dropped. So Michael is actually playing smart and um, it's, it's good to sit there and see that side of Michael come out, like the strategies that everyone was sitting there talking about. Because to be honest, you know, there was a time period where I started watching this show and, um, you know, from what I understand, you know, Michael really went to war on Sonny as far as getting, you know, getting, you know, custody of Avery, like used a bunch of dirty tricks and everything like that. Like the dude was relentless from what I heard. So I'm like, it's nice to sit there and see that, you know, that strategist side come out, you know? Especially the way he just laid down the law and smoke, like, yo, listen, you can sit there and try to sue me and you can try to take this, you know, this assault charge to like court or whatever, and I could just drag that out and, well, good luck. So, you know, Michael. Stella at some point, you know, when she gets to the hospital after, you know, she checked out and everything like that, she winds up calling Marshall and she was like, yo, listen, whatever you think you're going to sit there and tell Curtis, don't do it, you know, because it's going to ruin both our relationships with him. And um, the sad part is that once Curtis gets the information from Miss Wu, he's going to find out anyway. And um, <laughs> it's just going to be a whole lot worse. Now, Marsha wasn't at there talking to Trina, and it was somewhat interesting. Trina, with everything that's going on, you know, even the fact that, you know, she told Spencer that my life has been ruined the day that I met you, moving forward, she still is concerned about his opinion and the fact that, you know, he thinks that she's guilty. And, you know, Marsha's like, listen, you know, you got to sit there and ask yourself, like, has he really been a good friend to you? And more or less, you kind of is like, well, he was, but then, like, he wasn't, and this, that, and the third. I'm like, Trina, you are literally getting information from everyone. Hell, even Jocelyn. And you're still trying to, I don't know, cling on to some sort of relationship with him. I'm like, what is going on with you? Especially seeing that his girlfriend is setting you up, you know, for a crime that you didn't commit is going to ruin your reputation with the community, with your friends, and you're still trying to cling on to him. Why? I don't, I don't understand it. I, I really don't. Um, cause I, even Marshall was not there dropping some jewels of wisdom and I felt like it just wasn't take, <clears throat> it wasn't taking. And I'm like, Okay, um, so Harmony comes in to try to get a job from Carly, 
And Carly is like, listen, you know, Wiley is my grandson and, you know, I'm all down for sitting there helping you out. But Harmony is like, listen, um, I, I kind of got to sit there and tell you something. And she's like, you know, I went to Bath and Nina as far as, you know, visitation rights for Wiley, saying that she felt like she owed her. And I didn't really understand how she felt that she owed her, but she did sit there and say that she sympathized as far as, you know, her, <clears throat> her trying to sit there and see Wiley. You know, she doesn't really get to see Wiley that much. And I guess she felt like, you know, I understand where she's coming from. But she did more or less say that she regretted actually doing that. Um, and, you know, more or less, you know, Carly probably was like, you know, let's not have my person flag your, your application down and we'll just go from there. And she does wind up talking to Alexis because Alexis you know, comes in to talk to her about the story that she's going to be doing. Apparently, she's going to be doing, like, some sort of, like, TV um, special on it um, as far as Jocelyn and Cam's story. So she comes in with that. And then, you know, Carly's like, um, I, I already told, you know, Harmony, I'll sit there and think about it. And Alex is like, um, what? So after that whole thing is, un, you know, like, the confusion is, like, you know, not confused anymore, um, which is probably not a right word, but you know what I mean. After that, you know, Alexa's like, um, so what's, what's going on with Harmony? And here's the thing that's really interesting. Harley asked her, you know, could I trust Harmony? And... Alexa's like, you know, listen, as far as her, her work ethic and being my, you know, because she talked about how they were friends and that was pretty much her only friend when she was in um, Spring Ridge. And she's like, you know, listen, I can, I can sit there and say that she's a hard worker, you know, as far as like work ethic wise. The rest you're going to have to sit there and, you know, kind of take a chance on. Or more or less is what she said. And I'm sitting there thinking, if Carly just asked you, can you trust her? And you didn't give her a yes or no answer, but yet you're letting this woman stay with you. Or, like, did I miss something? Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, what? Now I will sit there and say, because I gotta, I want to sit there and remind people that you know Nancy is going to be taking a leave, you know, for medical reasons. And so at some point, we're going to want to get a temporary Lexus. And um, here's the thing. It's going to be a bit of a shock. Nancy is a very controversial figure. Okay? But let's just sit there and take that out for a minute. She's been playing Alexis to a T for years. Okay. I started watching this show when I was in high school. She's been playing Alexis longer than that. So, you know, having somebody else come in and temporarily be Alexis is going to be very jarring because I feel like Nancy can play Alexis blindfolded. You know, she's one of those people, one of those actors that have been playing the character so long. That I feel like she can kind of improv, you know, improv, improvise her lines, kind of like Sunny. I just, <laughs> just want to kind of throw that out there in case, like, I don't know when she's coming, but let's just sit there and say for the sake of argument, she comes like, I don't know, Wednesday. And we're watching it, and you know, it's just to say the role of Lex is be temporarily played by. It's gonna be like, I'm sorry, what? And then she's gonna speak and gonna be like. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> so I just want to kind of brace people for, um, you know, <laughs> I, I guess I just want to kind of brace people for that because sometimes it is a little jarring, even when you do know, like when they temporarily replaced Sam with the other actress, it was a little jarring to say the least. So Nina comes in to give Sonny a heads up as far as, hey, just to let you know I served your son you know, with some papers as far as, you know, seeing Wiley. And Sonny, I think he already kind of knew when she walked into the door. So he was like, yeah, you know, I know. And he talked about it for a little bit as far as, you know, Nina's like, listen, that's your son. If you've got to sit inside with him, 
You do what you got to do. I'm just, you know, just let you know. And then they talk about now for a little bit, which is the way they talk about the way that Sonny talks about now is that Sonny's like, you know, listen, you know, my family, you know, like your daughter was well, a psychopath because Nina's like, well, you know, they act, they're acting like I'm some sort of physical threat to him. And Sonny's like, well, Nell was. And at first I was like, yeah, I don't like Nina, but how are you sent to compare Nina to Nell? And Sonny was like, well, you know, that's just, you know, how my family may feel. And I'm like, you know, Nina's like, well, are you sent to saying that DNA is like, like we, they, I felt like it just kind of got off track for a little bit. And, you know, Sonny tried to make it up or whatever, like, oh, well, you know, I can see you and stuff like that, which I felt like he was just more flirting to kind of dig himself out the hole that he just created that literally came out of nowhere. Um, and then, he, then, you know, he gets into this whole flirtatious thing and, you know, she's checking on his eye and all this other stuff and, you know, he starts making out and then, you know, Sonny gets a call and he was like, oh, you know, I got to go, you know, I just came here to, you know, give you a heads up and, just looking at Sonny like, bro, you do realize that she is suing your son for custody of Wiley. And I get that, you know, yeah, I was hugging and kissing and everything like that. But like, maybe the, maybe when the blood actually starts to flow back up here, you kind of start realizing that um, Michael is not going to be happy about this whole situation. And you should probably brace for that at some point. Just, just want to throw that out there. So Laura and Victor having a convo and, you know, Victor is very cryptic. This is the thing that's a little, I guess, bothersome and also kind of annoying because, you know, Victor's, you know, he starts to get sincere with Laura as far as family and, you know, what he wants for his family and, you know, the time that he wasted and this, that, and the third and how it's important for him to sit there and protect his family or for the family to be in a better position or whatever. Something along those lines. Anyway, Laura can sit there and tell that he's being sincere. But the problem is that he's being very cryptic. Now, at this point, we all know that it probably has something to do with the Ice Princess and... Um, Jennifer Smith probably acquiring power to come to Port Charles to, you know, take over and all that other stuff. But my whole thing is with Victor, I'm like, bro, listen, if you are actually, and I guess it's so popular, but if you are actually sincere about, you know, you wanted to unite the family and you and Laura be a great force and this, that, and third, then you would loop her in on this conversation instead of being so damn cryptic about it. And, you know, Laura, after a while, was getting kind of annoyed, like, you know, it, it got to a point where she was like, well, you know, you just want power and this, that, and third. And, like, you have an opportunity to sit there and really let her in and kind of show, you know, on some level that you're a different person, that you do care about your family, but you don't care enough to sit there and let her in. So how much do you really care? It's like... You want to protect your family, but you want to keep your secrets and you want to get what you want at the same time. That's clearly not going to work out. So after a while, um, when Laura gets the call from Kevin that he can't make it, she's like, yeah, um, we ain't, we, we're not doing dinner or anything like that. And I'm just going to head on out seas. And um, yeah, so to be honest, that conversation went absolutely nowhere. Oh, okay. I knew I forgot something. I knew I forgot something. So Harmony was getting a, Harmony was getting calls all day, and I looked at it quickly. But if I remember correctly, I think the person that kept calling Harmony was Neil's brother. I forgot his name, but it was Neil's brother. I think that was um calling Harmony. Because I remember, and I read a little bit of the text, and it was something along the lines of, like, well, if I can't get a hold of you, then I get a hold of your daughter. Um, so I'm kind of curious. If I mean, granted, if it's not Neil's brother, I'm wondering who it is, but I'm pretty sure it was Neil's brother. I think his name starts with a B. Mm. 
anyway, I think that's pretty much about it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. So, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Um, also, I want to thank everyone for their patience. Um, and just, because, you know, I, I did my video late yesterday. And, you know, I was having insomnia the day before. And I just want to thank everyone for the advice and the support and um, just everything. You know, the kind words. It, it, I never thought. That, um, you know, I would, I don't know. When I, I mean, when I start, here's the thing. When I started this, this channel, I did it because Nina pissed me off. Um, and then I felt better after that. And I, I guess I just, I never thought that, you know, I would be so happy doing what I'm doing. And I would get so much support and, and um, you know, understanding and, and, you know, talk to so many great, amazing and really smart people. And even sometimes when I don't know something or I don't know the history of something, like I asked, you know, about Faith, Ro um, Faith Roscoe and, you know, how she died. And, you know, people, you know, told me and stuff like that. And I want to thank everyone for doing that because, you know, that meant a lot. Um, and sometimes when I don't know something, I know it. Well, sometimes when I don't know something, I ask and people tell me, and it does definitely help me, um, in my, in my future reviews and stuff like that, and just how I do this channel. So, you know, I don't want to sit there and say it's kind of a team effort, but in a lot of ways it is. And, um, you know, I just want to say thank you. So... Enough of the This Is Us moment, and I still got to catch up to the late se season. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.